Uh, my name is Andrea Aime. I've been working for uh, on GeoServer for a long time on GeoSolutions. Uh, GeoSolutions is one of the core uh, contributors to GeoServer. Uh, we are about openness, so we are a part of uh, OSGEO, open source, uh, open standards, and so on. So today uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to style a map in GeoServer. I'm not going to get into the details of every single style that we see because it's going to take too much time. You can look into the slides and drill into the details later. I'm just going to give you some ideas about how the styling works. So first of all, in GeoServer, we don't have a single styling language. We have a, a pluggable extension point that allows us to implement multiple styling language support in GeoServer. So at the core uh, stands an SLD10 inspired object model that is a, an in-memory representation of the styles, which is based on SLD. And, and then we can parse from XML, SLD10 and 11, but we also support a CSS-derived uh, uh, language called GeoCSS, a JSON-based language, which is Mapbox styles, and a YAML-based language, which is YSLD. Uh, since they have to be parsed into a common model, they have to have common concepts. So the concepts are the layers that we are rendering. Each layer gets a bunch of rules applied to it that identify what I want to render, basically. And uh, this is done through filters or selectors, depending on the language, that identify the features that I want to, to render. Scale dependencies that uh, tell uh, the rendering engine when to render uh, a certain feature. So a certain feature might not be visible at one, one zoom level, but it will become visible at another. OK. And, uh, um, and then symbolizers, that is how I paint that particular uh, feature. So SLD10 and 11 are OGC styling standards. They were meant for machine-to-machine -machine export. They were not meant for human editing. The thing is, we ended up using them as the first implementation of the styling language with a, uh, an XML editor for you to type in such lovely XML. And uh, it's still there today. Um, this is an XLD example. Uh, I'm omitting a lot of boilerplate, but at the top you can see an OGC filter tag, which is the filter, identifying all the features whose type is alpine hat. We can see a scale dependency, a max scale denominator of 1 to 100,000. So at 1 to, 1 to 200,000, for example, this point is not going to be visible. And then uh, the, the rest is just pointing to one particular icon, which is going to be used to display the point. YSLD is basically SLD in a YAML syntax. YAML can represent pretty, mu pretty much as um, all of you can, uh, that you can represent in XML, but typically with a much more compact syntax. And you can, you can see this time a full uh, style. The, I didn't remove any boilerplate here. Doing exactly the same. So you can see the filter, you can see the scale uh, dependency, and the uh, reference to the point. It's doing exactly uh, what the SLD is doing, but with a fraction of the uh, text. GeoCSS is based on the concepts of uh, CSS for the web, but uh, it only borrows, let's say, concepts and syntax, the filtering or selectors and uh, scale dependencies and uh, properties are unique to map rendering. So in these three lines, I'm basically saying, if type is alpine art and the scale denominator is less than 100,000, then use this, uh, this point. It's as compact as it gets in terms of expressiveness. And this is close to what uh, I would like to type if I have to type the, the, the style. And this is indeed what I'm using when I'm um, writing style myself. MB styles, Mapbox GL styles, is JSON based, is definitely designed to uh, not to, for hand editing, but for GUI editing. For example, using Maputnik, which is a popular open source uh, style editor for Mapbox styles, which is all point a click. Um, uh, it has a few things that annoy me a lot, like it's only working with Web, web Mercator, uh, because all the scale dependencies are expressed as zoom levels in Web Mercator. Uh, it's strange in that, uh, for example, symbology points to sprites, which are these large images with many um, sub-images inside, and then you say which sub-image you want to use. So you basically prepare a sprite for that one style sheet. 
And uh, then it has uh, the scale dependencies, as you can see, mean zoom nine, which is referring to the web, common web mercator zoom levels. The filter is JSON written in postfix notation, which is like a blast from the past for me because uh, when I was a student at uh, software engineering, the first thing that they made me do was a, a postfix notation or a Hungarian notation, as we called it, uh, expression evaluator, like first thing that I programmed <laughs> at the university. It was an exercise, of course. And then the, the symbolizer. Okay, styling concepts. How do we express the various styling concepts in the various languages? Scale dependencies. Scale dependencies in web maps are key because unlike a printed map, people can zoom in and zoom out and we need to display different things at different scales. So in SLD, we have min, max scale denominators that control at which scales stuff appears or disappears. In CSS, we have the at SD variable scale denominator that you can then compare to a, a value. And uh, well, you can decide, like in this example, not to show the buildings, but when I'm zoomed in enough, then I'm gonna show the buildings in the map. Um, but it's not the only way to handle scale dependencies. Another one is to express your sizes in the map as a unit of measure. So on the ground size, and I'm saying something like, okay, my stroke is gonna be five meter thick on the ground, so it's gonna shrink and grow as I zoom in and zoom out because it's, uh, it's like it's natural size. And uh, well, the SLD version of the, the style is a bit strange because there is this long URI that I need to use to, to specify meters, and in CSS I just say five meters, which is more human friendly. I can also do transformation functions, uh, functions by which I relate the current scale denominator to a value, a color, a, uh, a width, uh, a thickness, and so on. So this is taken from uh, OpenStreetMap, uh, the OpenStreetMap style that GeoSolutions provides for free in his own GitHub repository. And I'm basically saying, okay, uh, use a, a width of uh, two uh, for the scale denominator less than 400,000 and then switch to the other values as we uh, reach the various uh, breaking points. Uh, in CSS, it's uh, still compact enough. In SLD, maybe a little bit less. This is exactly the same expression uh, using the same values, but not as readable. Well, because there is a lot of boilerplate and the numbers have to be expressed uh, straight without using uh, suffixes like uh, thousands or millions. Point styling. Point styling, uh, we have already seen an example in the introduction. We typically point to a symbol, which could be a static image, and we control what gets uh, rendered by filters. Um, the symbol might be uh, a simple image, but it can also be a scalable SVG that then, then we can stroke and fill and so change its color, change its outline, like in this case, also coming from um, OpenStreetMap, I have an SVG which is black and white and then I can color it uh, to uh, generate a, a bank symbol. Uh, we can do more interesting stuff like uh, composing marks, like uh, superimposing two circles, in uh, CSS, it's done by separating the two items by, by a comma. Um, and uh, maybe also do scale dependencies so that I have a simple symbol when I'm zoomed out and I switch to a more complex symbol and I, as I zoom in. GeoServer has a lot of options to do mar uh, point symbology, so I can use uh, true type fonts just like Esri does. I just need to point to the right code in the, the font. I can do wind barbs. I can do random geometries specified as WKT and, and so on. There is a pluggable extension point. If you are not satisfied with, uh, with these options, you can literally uh, roll up your Java class and do it whatever way you want. Uh, filling polygons, well, filling polygons is typically easy. You provide a color for fill and uh, a color for uh, the outline. This is a comparison of the two. It can get a little bit more interesting, like you might be superimposing um, different uh, symbology. So in this case, I get um, a, gr a greenish uh, solid uh, background, but if I know the type of religion that cemetery uh, is dedicated to, then I'm, I'm going to superimpose uh, different types of cross and symbols to uh, identify the, the religion visually. Uh, we can also do hatching, 
uh, which is pretty common to have, you know, these diagonal lines for fields. Uh, it's actually implemented by repeating over and over a small symbol, like in this case, shape times, it's just a small cross, but as I repeat it, I, I get a hedge field as a result. Um, um, when it comes to line symbology, I have a few examples. This one also comes from OpenStreetMap. So in this case, I'm just specifying the, the stroke and stroke opacity, so the color and uh, the opacity of the, the color. Uh, the interesting stuff is actually the selectors that activate different country borders or let's say different administrative borders as I zoom in and out. So I start seeing uh, country borders and then province borders or region borders and so on and so on. Sorry. Uh, interesting enough, we can do dashing and uh, uh, symbol repetition to compose a complex symbology, such as weather fronts or uh, uh, fault lines and the like, which typically require to repeat symbology along a line. And yeah, that can be done. We can even synchronize multiple uh, hash, uh, uh, mm, sorry, uh, multiple dash arrays so that uh, they, well, basically, uh, in, intersect with each other, generating a more complex symbology. Labeling, labeling is always complicated. SLD and, and friends have uh, little options to control it. We came up with a ton of vendor options to, um, to control uh, in detail how the labels are placed. Uh, we have a lot to, I don't know, repeat the labels, group uh, uh, labels coming from different road segments into uh, one long uh, line. Uh, auto wrapping and so on. I have a few examples here. So in this case, I have a polygon label in SLD. I'm saying, okay, pick the, the label from this property with this font, place it in the middle of the uh, polygon, and then auto wrap it at 100 pixels. So to avoid the very long labels, it's gonna go on the next line. Uh, I'm uh, uh, forcing max displacement of 200 so I can move the label a little bit. And a goodness of fit of 90%, uh, meaning 90% of the label has to sit, uh, sit inside of the polygon. Sometimes, I mean, it can get ugly if my label is 10 times bigger than the polygon is trying to label. Uh, so we typically have a 50% rule. The la label has to be 50% inside the polygon. It can overlap, uh, but uh, we can control it. Uh, point labels are also interesting. Uh, the interesting bit, in my opinion, is actually the uh, setting obstacles. So in point symbology, I could say that the point symbol is actually an obstacle for labels so that labels will never overlap my point symbology, um, which would make the, the map uh, less readable. Line labels are typically also pretty complicated, especially when we try to uh, label road networks. So we want labeled along the lines, so curving. We might want to repeat them if the line is very long. Uh, if we have uh, multiple segments, we have to put them together and label the result and so on. So we have a number of vendor options to control that. In terms of raster styling, we can do, well, the classic uh, uh, digital elevation model or, you know, whatever uh, raster surface you have, temperature, uh, uh, concentration of whatever pollutant, and you associate colors to, uh, to the various values, and you create a ramp of colors. You can do also shaded relief if you want. Uh, when it comes to satellite imagery, you have all these 16 bit images. You probably want to do contrast enhancement, and we actually extended SLD so that we can control the levels of contrast enhancement, uh, starting point, end point, so that uh, you know, all the tiles coming from that one image are constant enhanced in the same way. Um, other assorted features. Uh, just so I can do color blending and alpha compositing, which can be used for masking or for, uh, I don't know, a nice shaded, shaded relief integration in, in, a, in a map. Uh, we can do Z ordering ev eventually across layers. So think uh, about, this is a, a real world uh, intersection in Germany with uh, roads and, and uh, um, uh, rails, and it requires like 20 Z levels. It's, it's like crazy. And uh, we are, uh, well, we, we have the Z level in the database and we are sorting it and painting stuff accordingly to get a real world uh, representation of what's below and what's above. Uh, rendering transformations are always uh, a kicker. Um, 
the idea is that we take our raw data from uh, uh, a raster in this case, and we can apply some light processing like a contour extraction on the fly and render the result without ha adding, ever having to store the contours anywhere, which is pretty interesting if your contours are dynamic, so controlled by the client. Uh, another rendering transformation that we have is called GIFO. It's a raster algebra, and uh, so you can take something like uh, Sentinel-2, which has 13 bands, and uh, apply some math and com come up with uh, uh, interesting indicators or indexes, such as the NDVI, the, um, I never remember the, the meaning, whatever. It's uh, differential vegetation something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and then uh, use a color map to uh, control uh, the, the colors. Uh, I've shown you so far only uh, text, uh, so this, the idea is that you are gonna type your language. I do it when I do it in CSS. I'm not very happy if I have to do it in SLD, but I do it anyways. There are po also point and click editors. Point and click editors, for example, you can start with QGIS and then do a save as SLD and import the result into your server. Don't expect the true fidelity. Uh, uh, QJS has a set of uh, rendering options which do not appear in SLD, so it's impossible to translate them. Uh, it has uh, some limitation in what it can translate, so SLD is fully attribute-driven, but QJS cannot export properly the attribute-driven part. So if you uh, say, my line uh, width comes from this attribute, you can do it in QJS, but uh, the SLD export fails, and uh, it's gonna use, uh, I don't remember what, but uh, not the attribute. Um, but for simple styles, it's gonna work, both raster and vector. And you can use it uh, as a starting point for hand uh, tweaking later. There's uh, GeoStyler, which is on, an online style editor, um, which is, again, uh, point and click, and it shows you the generated SLD as you go. And uh, uh, coming from GeoSolutions, we have the Map sto Store Styler, which is, if you are using GeoNode, the styler that you are using to make styles in GeoNode. And it also generates SLD and then, then uses the GeoServer REST API to apply it to GeoServer. And with that said, this will be it. <laughs>